Hey guys, my name is Peter from Crunch Time Coaching and today we're going to go over five habits that instantly make you play better tennis. So this goes across all levels of play, so this is going to benefit everybody. So you want to watch this video whether you are a beginner, whether you're advanced, whether you're intermediate, whether you're young, whether you're not so young, you want to watch this video if you want to play better tennis. All right, so let's jump right in. Number one is move your feet. You know to move your feet. You don't move your feet. Believe me, coaches all over the planet are going to agree that their players could do a better job with their footwork. I'm not asking you to get faster. I'm asking you to develop good footwork habits I'm showing right now on the screen for you so you can kind of see and the pros practice this. So I suggest if you want to develop really good footwork when, when you have a, a workout day rather than go on a treadmill where you're just running like this mindlessly or getting on a cycle and going like this for 30 minutes that you do a shorter workout. How about that? I'm going to give you a shorter workout. I'm just talking about a 10-15 minute workout and you move your feet for 20 seconds, you get a 10 second break, this is called a Tabata workout. You do eight to 16 rounds of it and you practice your split steps, getting ready, your recovery, your split step, getting ready. Again, I'm showing you pros off the court working on their footwork. They work on their footwork a lot without hitting the ball. So that's number one. Definitely do this and you'll be playing better tennis. I promise. I promise you will. Why is moving your feet so important? Why do coaches always yell at you to move your feet? Because we know that once you start moving your feet, you're going to start to play in a flow state. What is a flow state? That's another fancy way of saying you're playing in the zone. You're hitting the ball without thinking. Things are just coming easily. You're prepared early. You're hitting the out in front. You're hitting more winners. So there's lots of benefits to moving your feet. So stop fighting it and start doing it. All right, number two, run for every ball. Okay? The great Rick Macy, if you watched King Richard, he was basically the one that took Venus and Serena under his wing, took them out to Florida, trained them to become amazing. He also coached Andy Ryak. Well, anyway, when you go to his place right there on the fence, it says run for every ball. That's one of his big sayings. And why is that so important? Notice it's run for every ball. It's not get to every ball. It, one of the best examples I can think of right now that sent a message. 17-year-old Boris Becker, finals of Wimbledon. Now remember, he considers himself, he probably believed in himself he could win, but he came from out of nowhere. So he's got to consider himself a little bit of an underdog going against Kevin Curran, who, yes, he wasn't, you know, John McEnroe or, or Jimmy Connors or Bjorn Borg in the finals, but he was a household name on the tour at the time. And so Boris Becker, young Boris Becker, first point of the match. Kevin Curran hits a great serve, hits it across the court. Becker's got no chance of making this shot. He runs across the court and dives, lays his body out. Why? Because he was saying a message, I'm running for every ball. I'm running for every ball. Even though I don't think I can get there, even though there's little chance, even though I look ridiculous, I'm going to run for every ball. You know, Rafa sends a huge message every time he plays a match that I'm running for everything, even I don't think I can get there. And what does this do? This mentally and physically exhausts your opponent. They start to think, I can't take any shot off. Uh, no shot is good enough. They're going to run for everything. They never give up. That's the message you're sending. If you just pull up short on balls, a little short ball there goes, oh, I can't get to that ball. Somebody hits a great shot, you like immediately start clapping, oh, great shot. You see, now all of a sudden your opponent's starting to think, oh, this person is like beating up on a paper bag. Totally easy. Make sure you run for every single ball if you instantly want to play better tennis. All right, let's get into number three. Number three to instantly play better tennis is I want you to have an unshakable positive attitude. Tennis is such an emotional game. We're not going to be able to stop that. It's, it, things are always going to be going on in your brain, positive, negative. But if you can show your opponent that, hey, I'm here to play, 
If I'm down a couple games, I'm not gonna get down physically. I'm gonna be ready for every point. I'm gonna try my best every single point. I'm gonna try and play every point like it's my last point. If you can send that message to your opponent, you're gonna be so tough. You know, what's interesting is I watch players all the time, whether they're adults, whether they're juniors, especially because when you have a clinic, you know, maybe sometimes you can only play two or three games. So if a kid gets down two or three games, it looks like it's the end of the world. But it, it, what do you think about when you watch, when you watch Rafa, I love to use Rafa as an example. When you watch Rafa or Novak or even Roger get down two or three games, do you start to think, oh man, it's over, they're gonna lose. No, it's like, all right, they're just, they, all they need to do is just get warmed up. Once they get warmed up in the zone, they're gonna figure this thing out. That's the confidence that those players have instilled in us. It's like, doesn't matter if they're down a couple games, even a set, look at Novak at the French Open, down two sets in two matches, and those players quickly learn, you gotta finish it out. You gotta win three sets to win the match. So having that unshakable positive attitude to where you believe that you can always come back no matter what the score is because it's absolutely true. If you believe it, it can happen. You can turn the match around. And once you practice this, you're gonna become a much better tennis player. Hey, if you're totally obsessed with tennis and you're enjoying these tips so far, do me a big favor and give this video a like. It really helps other totally obsessed tennis players across the globe get to see this video, helps my channel, and when you do so, you're gonna get 100 free B2 puppy kisses, 100% free. All right, let's get in these last couple of tips so you can start instantly playing better tennis. Okay, habit number four. If you instantly want to play better tennis, this might be number one on the list. So really pay attention here and understand what I'm saying. I want you to start observing your game rather than judging your game. One of the best books that people tell me they read on tennis is called The Inner Game of Tennis. And they talk about that, that self one, self two. And if you can start to learn how to observe your tennis game, instead of judging it, you're gonna play better tennis. And the main thing I want you to get out of observing your game is when people judge their game, they'll hit a shot, this is, a, this is how you judge your game. You hit a shot, oh my gosh, that's the worst forehand ever. You stink, right? That's judging your game. That's not really gonna help. What, what's kind of interesting is when I ask players who usually act like that, when they say something like that about their forehand, I'll be like, okay, why did you miss your forehand? Because I stink, that's why. Okay, you stink. Why do you stink? Why did the forehand not go in? They look at me with a blank stare. I have no, they, don't, they have no idea why the forehand actually didn't go in. They just know that their forehand sucks in their mind. That's not gonna help them become a better tennis player. That's not gonna help them win. Tennis, if you wanna really love tennis, you gotta love the problem solving part of tennis because there's always going to be problems. You're, even if you're playing really good tennis, even the pros play really good tennis, every 20, 30, 40 seconds, they're missing a shot usually, even if they're going to win the match. Novak Djokovic, one of the most dominant tennis players ever, if not the most dominant tennis player ever, when he's had some of his best years, he's only winning 54% of the points. Can you believe that? That's crazy, right? But he's able to problem solve. He's able to make less mistakes than his opponent. That's all it takes to win the match. So if you start to observe your mistakes and you go, oh, okay, I just missed that forehand and net. That's interesting. Hmm, now that I think about it, I definitely could have bent my legs lower and maybe had more of a racket drop before I hit. So the next time I see that ball, I'm gonna lift it over the net. Oh, that went in the net. Yeah, I, I guess I really wasn't thinking about how high I wanted to hit a ball over the net. I was maybe aiming a little too low or maybe I shouldn't have gone down the line that time. It was too much of a risk. The net's higher when I go down the line. Maybe I should go cross court next time. You see now, you're observing and you're problem solving and guess what? If you just learn how to do that, you're gonna be playing better tennis for sure, instantly. So let's get to number five. This is also super important. It goes along with problem solving and that's understanding what mode of play you're in and what's the best shot to hit out of that. Okay, it sounds really fancy, but tennis is a pretty simple game actually. You're either gonna be playing offense 
where you're going to be neutral, meaning that no one's really got an advantage on the point, or you're going to be on defense, where someone's running you around or pushing you back and putting you in a tough situation. And when you understand what's going on there, then you can reply with the best shot possible. Okay? So, actually got a tennis, we had them on for tennis con. They broke the, uh, the court into five different areas. You know, and, and up there, around the service box into the net, that's area one. Now you're on offense. Now you gotta be thinking about you know, winning the point, going maybe a little more higher risk and getting the point done in one or two shots. If you're gonna be staying up there, hitting an approach shot, getting in there, you're serving volume or something like that, that's where you gotta finish points. Then, right in this area, right here between the service box and right about where I'm standing, now you're in area uh, two, and this is again where you're transitioning lots of times. Then you come back here, you're gonna be right before the, the baseline. Now, this is your challenge area, right? So like basically baseline like right here and forward, we'll show it on the screen, we'll show the five, the five areas. Now this is where you wanna to start to think about in area uh, three, where you wanna to start to think about maybe challenging your opponent. Not necessarily going for a winner, but maybe taking a little bit more risk, but keeping some height on the ball, keeping some spin, and seeing if you can create a short ball. All right, then area four is basically like baseline behind a little bit, you're neutral. So hitting like crazy hard shots down the line, lots of times it's not gonna be rewarding. That's where you're gonna be losing points. And then finally when you're off the baseline, when you're back, you know, like how these players now like to return, now you're on defense, okay? And especially if you're scrambling back and forth. And this is usually where you wanna hit the ball higher, heavier if you can, cross court, and really make your opponent work to try and beat you rather than just hit like a silly slap shot that's most likely not gonna go in. So if you do these five habits, don't you agree you'll be instantly playing better tennis? Let me recap for you. And don't forget, if you like this video, if you're still watching this video, there's something about it you like. So, so give this a like, it's absolutely free to do and it helps me a lot. Remember you get unlimited B2 puppy kisses. So number one, move your feet. Number two, run for every ball. Number three, have unshakable positive attitude. Number four, observe your tennis, don't judge your tennis. And number five is understand what mode of play you're in. Go do this, you'll definitely be playing better tennis, all right? Also, if you wanna play better tennis, you wanna serve better. And so I've got a free serve course. We're not just talking one free video that's free, or two, or three, we're talking 33 free videos right now, serving A to Z. So if you've got trouble with your toss, if you wanna learn how to hit slice, or kick, or get more power, or you feel like your rhythm and flow's a little off, Get the course right now. It's up here in the card section. It's down in the um, description. You just click on the link, you sign up, get your user and password, bam, you're off to the races. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And my name is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. We're gonna see you on the next video. So that's why you wanna subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing.